Good morning guys. Happy New Year once again. My name is Jason. You're watching Old Car Auto Guy. And this is my 1979 Chrysler Cordoba. If this is your first time tuning into this channel, I would encourage you right now to go right down here and hit that red subscribe button and bell notification. Stay subscribed and stay updated to all the shenanigans and all the fun that we have on this channel. Stay tuned. <laughs> Guys and gals, it is the new year, and you know, we're already almost a week in. And one of the things that I want to try and resolve for 2019, and in this is in no way a resolution per se, as it is a goal for the channel, is to really stop talking like an announcer. I find that when I go back and listen to a lot of my videos, when I'm looking for clips or what have you, is I find that I'm talking like I would be as if I was reading the news or whatever and sometimes not using my regular voice. So even right now I'm trying to relax a little bit and just use the regular old sarcastic filled deep baritone Jason Carr voice. So that is one thing that we're going to try and do. Just be me. A little bit more. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, today we are doing a couple of things in this video. One of them is we have a Nissan Versa and you guys will remember the Nissan Versa in one of my reviews that I did, my Tuesday reviews days, in this video right here. And the problem with that vehicle was, was well we sold it and uh, about three weeks after we sold it we get a phone call from the customer saying he's on the side of the road and the, uh, the car just won't go anymore. So I send Dad, who is a transmission mechanic of over 30 years, and my mechanic, Tim, up to see if there's something that they can do. And what they found was that the uh, transmission has gone into limp mode. So after starting the vehicle, again, the uh, limp mode was kind of gone for a few, and then uh, they were able to get the vehicle back to the shop. And upon further diagnosis, there was a few codes in there about, uh, of course those are CVT transmissions, there was a code in there, something about uh, something pressure, I forget what it is, but if I remember what it is, I'll put it down in the title so you can see it. And anyways, we ended up taking it to a, a, a transmission shop to have them diagnose it, and lo and behold, they found that the transmission was indeed toast. So... Um, we looked after the customer, uh, we've got that all situated, and the only problem that we have right now is that, according to the transmission shop, that vehicle, because it's a Nissan, has to go back to Nissan to have the transmission computer, or the, or the uh, TCM, re reprogrammed or reflashed, I guess they call it. So, our computer at the shop will do that, we hope, because we've done it with the white Jeep Patriot or Jeep Compass that we just did the transmission in. So we're hoping they'll do it for the Nissan as well. I made two trips up there yesterday uh, to use it, but the computer kept dying and apparently they don't charge very well when you plug the charging cord into the headphone jack. I'm not sure why. Anyways, I did manage to get it plugged into the right spot last night and it'll be all fully charged when we get there this morning. And we're going to take a run up there first thing and try and get that uh, computer reset because the alternative is to rent a U-Haul trailer load that sucker up and haul it to St. John and get the dealer to do it. We don't really want to do that because we're looking after the customer and uh, every expense that we have is, is our expense at this point so it's going to cost about 100 bucks for a U-Haul trailer It'll probably cost somewhere in the vicinity of $100 in fuel to get up there and back. And the time that it's going to take uh, away from the shop. So we want to try the easy way out first and hopefully that will, uh, that will satisfy the issues that we're having with that vehicle. Uh, but the transmission shop assures us that the, uh, the new transmission is, that's in there is good and that it's not giving any codes and that once we get it reset, should be able to take it for a test drive and do the relearn and be done. So that is what we're going to be doing right now. I'm surprised this door even opens. So let's see if 
if this thing turns on. Yay, it's on and it has a full battery. It's amazing what happens when you uh, try and charge something up and plug it into the right spot, it actually charges. <laughs> Even up here in Maine, Dirty Max Jack has a fan. Either that or somebody just likes Dirty Max has a name. Anyways, so here we are with the Nissan Versa. We're gonna plug in our computer system and see what we can do to make this thing happen. system does not support coding function for the transmission. Well, son of a gun. Well, so much for that idea. Our computer won't uh, read the uh, transmission control module, unfortunately, so it looks like we're heading to U-Haul and grabbing a trailer. So, I'm not sure if I'll record that. I've done so many of those already with, uh, with the Kia Soul, but anyways, back to the shop. So we've made it back to the shop and uh, we've got the U-Haul all reserved and we just got to get up there before 10 o'clock this morning to get it picked up. However, our plow is missing something. This is the plow motor. This is the pump case. This is the pump. On New Year's Day when we were having a little bit of snow and slush and freezing rain, Deb was out here plowing and I get a phone call saying the plow has quit and didn't know why. Well, come to find out two issues. One is we've got a bad solenoid or valve on the pump itself. Actually, first of all, it started off with this little hose that has a filter on it. That's where the pump you know, takes in all the hydraulic fluid had popped off here. So it was just basically sucking air because the level of the, of the hydraulic fluid is down about this far. So that's why it initially quit. But come to find out one of these little switches here, which control the up and down of the hydraulic lift or the left and the right, um, there's three of them all together, uh, has, has died. And this is it right here. And I'd show you, with, but I don't know if I can get it apart with one hand. It's supposed to move freely and it does not. So uh, we've got a new one of these coming and we've got a new motor coming. Hopefully by about noon time we'll have that. We can get the plow all back together uh, because we are, it's flurrying out there right now and we're supposed to get, uh, you know, maybe an inch of snow today, which is not a big deal, but when you've got a parking lot, you've got to keep it plowed. And this is what, Thursday? And on the weekend, we're, they're calling for, you know, a little bit more snow. So we've got to get it up and running and uh, hopefully, like I said, by the end of the day, we'll have that back to normal. In the meantime, we've got to get the uh, plow truck up to the U-Haul and get the trailer hooked up to it and uh, get that Nissan Versa up to the Nissan dealer in St. John. So like I said, I'm probably not going to film that because I'm likely not the one that's going to be taking it up. But uh, anyways, that is the uh, story on that. The customer's 2009 Hyundai Tucson is still here. We really haven't gone any further than the last video. And the reason for that is, is I have explored all options on my part and Tim will be back to work tomorrow from vacation. So he's going to take a look at it and see uh, if we can determine, you know, what's going on, whether we've got a bad relay or what the problem is there. However, not all is lost. The customer has been in and she has tried out a few vehicles, which is good news because she's had this one for, I think, almost four years, maybe now. And, uh, you know, her kids are getting older. She'd, she'd like to upgrade. So she's been interested in the 2014 Santa Fe. 
I did receive confirmation on the 2013 Kia Sorento sitting out in the front lot. That will be going out on Monday. Hopefully the customer with the Tucson is interested in the Santa Fe. And we've had a few people in and out already this year. This year is 2019. Uh, so hopefully we can put a few deals together. So the other thing that I am looking forward to for 2019 is to help myself to tweak my channel is a little bit more interaction with you guys and I've going back over some of my older videos I realized that I don't although I, I'm talking to you guys I don't ask for your interaction you know I thank you for your comments because a lot of people do leave comments but I don't uh, I don't get you to comment by saying things like you know is there something new that you would like to see in 2019 on this channel I posted that question up on my Instagram and I got a few responses and I want to share those responses with you in a future video but go ahead and comment down in the section below and tell me what you think uh, would be a great addition or something that we can tweak on on the channel uh, for 2019 and I will certainly uh, read those through and uh, do my very best to make sure that we can accommodate everything that we can uh, within reason of course so uh, you all know that project bubbles is something that uh, it seems to be an ongoing issue more so than a project uh, but as we move on with the uh, with the year come April um, it will not pass inspection and I'm not putting any more money into it it does have a few uh, issues uh, you know major issues that are gonna have to be fixed on it before we can uh, uh, get it re-inspected so having said all that uh, it will go out with a bang I'm not exactly sure what that looks like yet but uh, come the end of April it will be going out with a bang. So guys, t-shirts and hoodies are available in the first link in the description box below. You can get them in many sizes and multiple colors. They are from bonfire.com. I don't have any left myself, so that is the only way you can get them. And hopefully within the next month or so, I'm gonna have a new design up there for you guys to choose as well. Thank you for all the sales to date, and we will have more uh, coming very, very soon. Guys, the contest is still on, 1,000 subscribers by January 31st. we got a little bit of ways to get there, but I'm counting on you guys to spread the word about Old Car Auto Guy and get that out there. If we get to 1,000 subscribers by January 31st, I'm going to draw from my subscriber pool for $1,000 cash. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.